what's the biggest red flag you ignored? He hadn't actually told his ex they were broken up, just that they needed to take a break. I should have taken a break too at that point. Shortest relationship of mine, he broke up with me after three days. Told me he didn't think he'd be able to be faithful. I stupidly asked, why is that? Turned out the girl he supposedly broke up with, he hadn't. I was the other girl. Black. I was the girlfriend in this instance. My ex never actually broke up with me, just weren't seeing each other for a moment, height of COVID was the reason, found out a few months later he was going out with other girls. He now claims he did break up with me and I just forgot. Whatever buddy, keep telling yourself that to make yourself feel better. His friends had to convince me to stay with him after I was hospitalized for three days, miscarriage that turned into an hemorrhage, and he didn't visit once. I'm so sorry to hear this. Was abandoned for my miscarriage by my husband, who left me with our toddler while he went to support his sister and her wife for a medical issue out of state. Was told to go to the ER but couldn't because of no child care or family, finally getting divorced 17, miserable years later. I was in the hospital getting triaged for an appendix that was about to burst while she was in the waiting room chatting to her side piece. That's nowhere near your situation, but it might just have been the beginning of the end. Not that I was any saint in that relationship. We were just two lonely miserable people who thought we'd be happier together than alone, and the longer we tried to make it work, the more I realized our miseries were compounded by the other rather than relieved. Seven years. No kids. Now I've been happily married for twelve, five kids, including three step. I'm still not perfect, and I guess I never will be, but I try every day to be a better person because I genuinely love her. Sometimes the drama she had with other people didn't make sense. Like I'd ask, what did they say, and she would generalize in a vague way. One time I doubled down and asked literally what exact words were said, and she started crying because she was so upset. Turns out she invented drama, including faking phone calls, emails, text messages. She couldn't give me exact words because there were no exact words. She was just a fucking sociopath. I've been in this exact situation. Not a fun time. She would constantly tell me HIW, everyone has it out for me, or, did why people seem to always hate me I do nothing, but could never tell me exactly what was going on. She was real good about making sure I never asked those people about too. Turns out she was fucking her ex the whole time we were together and of course he didn't know either. I could write an essay about how messed up that girl is. When conversations and meetups are always initiated by you and never by them. One-sided relationships suck. One of the solidifying moments in dropping a friend was the fact it took them months, literally months to notice I had them blocked on most communication places. Had a friend like that who never initiated. Returned after five months to tell me in a wall of text how irresponsible and shitty I am for not contacting them. At least yours answered. Mine never answered after I stopped contacting them. Found out I wasn't their friend at all apparently. He showed up with one black garbage bag of his belongings, but said it was cause his place burnt down. Our place must have burnt down as well, cause he left with a black garbage bag of his belongings, a little over a year later. Meeting me late evening slash at night mostly in the car driving around or places like McDonald's and Subway. I thought he is just busy, apparently he just didn't want anybody to see us together as he was meeting someone else who was better looking in appropriate hours and places. After that I learned to ignore everyone who proposes first dates at 22.30 driving around and hanging out. I don't know why anyone would that just sounds like serial killer talk. Loneliness. It's great for lowering one's standards to dangerous levels. He talked major shit about all of his friends, constantly. I never even considered that he was doing the same thing to them about me. Rule of thumb, if they shit talk to you, they shit talk about you. That's why I always go for the friends that will shit talk to my face. That way, everything's all on the table. The biggest red flag I ignored was the one I was waving in my own face every time I chose to lie about or omit something to avoid hurting my wife's feelings or to avoid an argument instead of just being transparent and forthcoming and figuring out our problems. Happy spouse happy life is a big fat lie people. You're going to hurt your best friend real bad if you keep it up. My partner does this and being on the other side has been challenging for me. 
I've been guilty of this, and I'd say the number one reason is because I feel my problems aren't worth ruining the mood. Maybe it's a self-esteem issue, maybe it's because of my upbringing. I don't know if it's the same for your partner, but that's just my anecdote. I took a job knowing that my awesome coworker had come from that company slash role and only lasted seven months. I also only lasted seven months. Very cool job, nightmare people. What was the job and what was so bad about the people? Usually people leave because of the job itself and stay because of the people so this intrigues me. Gaslighting. It's crazy how long I let it go before I even realized, and even still it took years of reflection to fully recognize how bad it was. God, my husband is literally currently gaslighting me into thinking I cheated on him, not the other way around. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe.